Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Kyle here. I hope you're doing wonderful today. Now today we're going to do a Q&A. You've been asking questions and I'm going to do my best to answer them. Fascinating questions that I'm really excited to talk about. A happy new year to many of you. Believe it or not, this is the first video on this channel of 2023. And I'm really excited to talk about what's been going on over the past few weeks. A lot has changed and a lot's going to change for this channel going forward for the next little bit. Now, for those who don't know, I launched a coffee roasting business. We've been working really hard this month to launch and prepare, roast, profile and ship to many of our Kickstarters. So thank you if you were one of those who supported. It just absolutely blew our minds, did not expect this in the wilds of our dreams. So also we have a facility for September that we get in about a week. And so we're gonna document the whole process of launching a coffee roasting business to the best of our abilities. I wanna bring you along in this journey. So expect that content in the next little bit, uh, but you can sign up to our newsletter down below, follow our socials if you want to. Let's answer some questions. Vixen Young on Instagram says, what are your top three coffee gear picks of 2023? This one's easy. I'm really excited for the fellow Opus. You, you didn't see nothing. Now, for those who don't know, it's been leaked. That fellow has a conical burr grinder to sit alongside the Ode Brew Grinder, a grinder I've praised on this channel, especially their new generation two for the lack of static, their updated burrs. And fellow in the Opus has openly said from their engineers that this conical burr grinder will be powerful enough to do espresso. It's gonna be compact and affordable at $195. Now on this channel, I've been very vocal about how excited I am for the approachability within specialty coffee and brewing coffee at home. Things are coming down in price, even though inflation is going up, we're seeing more innovation in the industry. And I love what fellows come to do here. Now, I do have the Opus. I'm brewing coffee on the Opus and I'm excited to share my thoughts on the Opus. I can't say anything today, I'm under NDA, but if what fellow promises is true in the fellow Opus and what it's able to do, I think it might be a game-changing grinder. I'm stoked to share my thoughts very soon. The second thing that I'm excited for is the Odyssey Espresso Argos. Now this is a lever espresso machine and it's got some really unique features that for those who are not familiar with like lever style espresso machines, but kind of want to explore that, I think it'll be a great option because of its price range and feature set. Now to keep it very short, it's got this option. I think it's a switch or a spring where it can be like a traditional style uh, lever where it's got a spring loaded lever, or you can have uh, a lever style more similar to like the Flare 58, where as you pull pressure, that pressure is then applied to the puck. And I think it's under a thousand dollars US, which is not cheap, but for a machine like that and its beauty and craftsmanship, it's pretty exciting. So keep your eyes open for the Odyssey Espresso. I believe that's planned to come out this year in 2023 and I hope to get my hands on one. We will see. Now for my third pick, I was gonna pick the Meticulous Home, which is a new espresso brewer. And this one's fascinating to me because it's not just the same old in a new form. Uh, it's got a completely new technology. It's essentially to basically bring it in the simplest of terms an automated lever machine in the way that it operates. I'm stoked to get my hands on that and play around with that to see the espresso that it creates. But what I'm gonna say instead, I'm not gonna say that as my third option, though you should keep your eyes out for that. Uh, I'm gonna say the new innovation within baskets, espresso baskets. Now, at first glance, this sounds very boring. It kind of, no, it's not boring. I think it's pretty interesting. For example, if you don't know what I'm talking about, this is a typical VST precision basket. These are high quality. This is an older one. As you can see, I've used this for many years. They're a step above the standard basket that come in most espresso machines and uh, it makes your espresso extractions a little more consistent. There's a lot of positives to a basket like a VST or any precision basket. Now in 2022, taking the next step forward, first off Weber Workshop's announcement of their new basket. And there's other companies like Wayfo. Uh, this one here is, is the single origin espresso filter. I also have their black blend basket as well, which is in the Bianca behind me. They're pretty interesting. As you can see here, the holes go to the wall of the basket and there's a lot more holes. And so in my experience, the extractions are higher. You can get more extraction out of your espresso shots. The shots are faster too. They're not quite as aesthetically pretty in the traditional sense, but they taste absolutely incredible. And so I'm excited to see how the portafilter baskets, how this evolves. And I would love to see some budget options for this as time goes on, because this is like a $200 basket. And that's a hard pill to swallow for a lot of people. 
unless you're a diehard enthusiast. So those three things, keep an eye out for them. Meticulous Home as well, if you wanna throw that in there. Uh, I hope to go to Portland SCA. Hopefully we can see something new there. Uh, Host, I believe, is this later this year in Italy. Hope to see some of you guys there. If you're planning to go, let me know. Sergey said, what would be your ultimate collaboration? Would it be Austin Matthews? Austin Matthews would be pretty awesome. But no, I think the obvious answer there would be James Hoffman. I would love to do something with Hoffman down the line small or big it'd be awesome just to be alongside somebody who i look up to who's kind of paved the way in the industry for a lot of coffee youtubers like myself who now does this as part of my living i'm good friends with lance hedrick and, and i know that we've been talking about collaborating in the past i hope we can get out to europe you know what why don't you come to canada lance canada's pretty awesome and there's a lot of good coffee roasters here so you come on over here we'll set up in the studio we'll do something together so i'll be waiting Wisen Chen on Patreon said, why start a roasting only company and not a coffee shop that also roasts coffee? That's a fantastic question. Now in the process of starting this business, we definitely considered opening a cafe, but I think cafe ownership and owning and running a cafe seems a lot more glamorous than it actually is. It's long hours, it's a lot of work. And the big thing for me was it would not allow me to do YouTube ongoingly because the hours are so long and it demands so much of your time. For us, one thing that's very important is to maintain this channel and continue creating valuable content to all of you and help inspire and educate you to create better coffee at home. Within that, to align with that vision, roasting coffee made sense. We can roast coffee a few days a week, run that business, but also continue to create content for all of you going forward. And so that is kind of our hope and our journey. And this will hopefully allow us to open up some opportunities for different content within roasting, but also uh, origin trips and talk about, talking to farmers and producers, which we're already in the talks with. So we just wanna create content that's not being created a ton and continue to educate in different ways uh, from our perspective. Hopefully that resonates with you. This is a spicy one from Instagram. What do you like least about drinking coffee or the coffee industry? What do I like least about drinking coffee? I would say probably the normalization of caffeine addiction. I think caffeine addiction is bad and I think we kind of laugh about caffeine addiction in the coffee industry. I don't think it's a good or healthy thing. So I think that's something I don't love. And what do I not like about the coffee industry? Specifically, I think it's probably the tribalism which we see within leaders in the industry, be that content creators or educators or scientists or leaders in the industry who have done incredible things in the past. And, and if somebody disagrees with something they say, uh, it can be a terrible thing, right? And so I think there's this, this whole culture within specialty coffee where where we glorify certain people um and and to a certain extent rightfully so they've done incredible work in the industry uh but we we glorify these people and know their names and a lot about them and yet we know very little about farmers and producers it's a conversation for a whole nother day uh but i think that's an issue and, and here i am kind of hypocritically saying this on a youtube video that will probably have many views so there's that Tyler on Instagram says, how has the transition from youth pastor to creator slash roaster been? Uh, Tyler, thank you. For those who don't know, I used to work at a church and today I am working in the coffee industry. And the transition has been incredibly fun and beautiful. I've been able to spend more time with my family and kids. Um, it's such an important time of their lives. They're both under five years old and I don't wanna miss this time. But overall, it's been wonderful. Uh, I've enjoyed my time in, in my past career and I'm excited for uh, what the future holds within coffee for me and my family. Thanks, Tyler. And this one's interesting. What's the one thing nobody asked you that you really wish somebody asked? Maybe my priorities. I think when we watch content, watch videos on YouTube, I'm a huge YouTube fan myself. We can often look at creators and the more content that somebody creates, the more we like them. Uh, the reality is when we're creating tons of content behind the scenes, we can be zombies and we can be dead inside. Grinding culture to do more is not always healthier for the person on the other end. I get it. We benefit from the ones who receive it. But my priorities right now are uh, my family. And more than anything, I just want to be a great husband and a great father. And then after that, it's it's September and this channel and all of you and creating fantastic content and bettering myself and my mental health, my physical health, um, ensuring I'm continually developing as a creator, but also as a coffee professional, if you can call me that. Nobody really asks creators, and I would encourage you to go find somebody else can ask them, uh, where are your priorities at? And are you are you actually good? 
because content creating is fun. It's super cool. But on the other end, it can be incredibly exhausting, especially the dopamine hits it has when you get all those likes. Speaking of which, do me a favor and hit that like button down below. That's a deep conversation for a whole nother day, but um, that's something nobody asked me. And uh, to answer that, I've currently never been better. I'm excited for what the future holds. So hopefully this video helped. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to smash that like button on the way out. Subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, join the Discord down below for the Home Barista Discord. It's free. We'll see you over there. Patrons down there too if you want to win some gear that I give away monthly and coffee that I give away monthly. We'll see you guys all in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Love every single one of you guys. Peace.